Hi, Dr. Tom Anderson here with uh, Word for Winners, and we're talking about grace again today with my lovely wife. Yeah, Maureen Anderson. And, and we're I'm, excited. I'm so excited. Yeah. My book here is... Oh, uh, here it is. I got because, it up. Yeah, oh, well, you got it right there, but I have it over here, too. And so the book is God's Grace Fuels My Passion. I have a book and I have a workbook. And so if you'd like to do a Bible study, uh, you can order the book and the workbook. And the workbook is uh, really Yeah, good. and use it for, and, and they've used it for women's Bible studies or your own home Bible study or your own devotional time. You can use it for that. And so, uh, the uh, pastor can get a lot of good sermons out of it yeah. because it's really good. Yeah, but also, Jesse Duplantis wrote the foreword, and he said that this was the best book he's ever read on grace. So I have to throw that in there. And so it was that I received a revelation of grace, and then the Holy Spirit had me write the book. And so we're going to be teaching from chapter four uh, today. And I really want to encourage you to go to our YouTube, uh, Dr. C. Thomas Anderson, as you enjoy this message, you'll hear many other messages. Like, subscribe, and share. And so uh, this chapter is about show us the Father. And so we see in the life of, of Christ Jesus came to show us the Father. That's what he said. I'm the image of the invisible uh, uh, God. You know, yeah, he is. The, the Father. And then, you know, in uh, John, I think it was 14, I think it is, John 14, where uh he said show us the father yeah philip said show us the father and and uh jesus said how much longer do i need to be with you philip when you see me you see the father jesus said and john uh five says that he says i never do anything on my own so and then he says i only do what i see my father do and i only say what my father says so this chapter is about showing us who the father is that Jesus came to reveal Father God to us and to fill, fulfill the law and uh, to set us free through the death, burial, and resurrection, the old covenant, the curse of the old yes. covenant, the law, and the word of God says that uh, the law was given to us to show us we couldn't keep it you know, because of the original sin of Adam and Eve. And so we weren't good enough and that we would need a savior. And so... So anyway, this book is about the grace of God, because when I move into the new covenant, I move into what Christ has done, the works, and that now I'm, when I receive Christ as my Lord and Savior, my old person's dead and gone, but I'm a brand new person made in the likeness and image of, of Father God. And when you see me, you should see Jesus now in my life, and that now I'm in the kingdom of God. And so whatever is in the kingdom, I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Yes, in Jesus' coming, he came as the, to bring direction and understanding as the spirit of truth coming. And, and as the spirit of truth came to bring the right image of Father God, that God is good, God is, God is love, God is, is the power of his word, the power of truth. And so he, that is the reason that he came. And with that came this new found thing, finally released from heaven, called the crown power of grace. Yeah. Crown power, power of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit that now gives us this gift of faith by, or grace by faith. Yes, and that's the truth. Oh, awesome. Yes, and so we have to understand that, that, um, that God, that Jesus is here to reveal the Father to us, and revealing uh, just the and revealing the Father, all the things that Jesus did reveals who Father God is and how He cares about yeah. people. Why were yet sinners loved us, and all of, do do we grasp the awesomeness of His displaying who Father God is? That's the truth. Oh, it's awesome. And so we see in First John uh, 14 says, the word became flesh. And Jesus, the Bible says, in the beginning, John 1, 1 was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And so Christ Jesus is the word. And it said became flesh now and dwelled among us, it says here. And we see his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, 
full of grace and truth. So he was full of Very that important. grace. He was full of all that heaven contained. He was full of that inheritance. He came with the power of the word and all that it represents in our life because he is the word. And it says this, that in John uh, 1, 16, and this is out of the NIV, says, from the fullness of grace, now that's what he brought, word. we go from one blessing to another, or we receive one blessing after another. So now in No grace, longer blessing and cursing, is yeah. blessing and blessing. The oh, law brought the blessing and curses, but grace, the new covenant, brings blessing and blessing. I may like that out there. Yes. I like that a lot. Because Jesus fulfilled the law, and he took on the curse. He became a curse for us. So that was dealt with. And then he says in John 1, 17, the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Christ Jesus. And so, anyway, so I just want to bring that out to you. Um, as we talk about the, uh, the book, God's Grace Feels by Passion, and this chapter is about, show, you know, show us the Father. And so we see this that we read in the Gospels that Jesus was an intercessor. We know now that in heaven, he is an intercessor that ever lives to pray for us. And so he's not only our high priest, but he's also our king. And a double portion of the anointing that, what that priest, stands that's it. for. Yes. And so we see that when he walked this earth, they said that he was up before the disciples ever got up, before the sun ever, ever, ever came up. He was out interceding that they feel like that he interceded probably three to four hours a day. That he what do you think he was praying and receiving? He was, he was now finding out from the Father God what was the day and what it entailed for that day and what God had him to do. And because he amazing? was here to show us the Father. So he only said what he heard the Father say, the Word yes. says, and he only did what he saw his Father do and that he could do nothing on his own. I've already said that, but I think it's, we have to really spend some time to meditate on that. So he never healed anybody, though he healed. Father God healed them through him. He said, it's only the Father that works through me. And so. And that's the way it is with us today. It's only the power of the living God and the Word that work, or Christ in us that work through, through us. us. Yeah, grace God, is God working through God us. God working through, through us. us. Yes. And to so, live a life and life more abundant. That's why grace teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. Why? Because then it can lead us, the Holy Spirit can lead us into life, life more abundant. It can lead us not only into born again life, but also into life more abundant here on earth. Yeah. So we can live the best possible life on earth is why grace yeah. was given so that we could be fully qualified every single day by the blood of Christ and by the price paid to experience the best life and life more abundant. Yes, and right here in the flesh. Yeah, and the old person's dead and gone. It's that, no more. That dirt, we are a brand new person right. in Christ Jesus. So, 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 uh, thinking about this intercession that Jesus yes, did daily right. to start his day. Now, what the Word of God tells us. This is in First Samuel sixteen. Says this about about Father God that he looks. He doesn't look like man does. We look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. So now we're seeing in the Gospels, the Father God looking at the heart of people. And so we see the day that, you know, the woman at the well, John 4, 6 through 21, Ooh, that's where, a good story, where yeah. Jesus went, oh, yeah. uh, you know, to, Listen you to know, through Samaritan to the, uh, you know, to, to sat and waited at the well for the woman and uh, he told his disciples that, you know, he needed some food and that, and they left. But he was there for a purpose. He was there to talk to a Samaritan woman who the Jews hated, but also to bring her the gospel. And so he went he, where Jews were not supposed to go. No. Yeah. But and he was looking for a heart. Heart. And that he had the assignment of Father God for the day. And when she came to the well to draw water, he said, hey, if you ask me, I'll give you water and you'll never thirst again. And she said, you don't even have a bucket. bucket yeah. 
And he then said, well, go get your husband. And she said, well, I don't have a husband. And he said, Jesus said, Der, that's true. You've had five husbands, and now the man you're living with is not your husband. So, And the reason that he came at noon was because those kinds of women, excuse the term, could only draw water and not get harassed by the other women in the community. They would come in the heat of the day yeah. to get water. Yes. And so we see there the mercy of God. The mercy of God. Though he did point out her sin, there was yes. no condemnation he because he set her free at that moment. And uh, she became born again, and she went into the community and and told everybody about Jesus, the Messiah that knew everything about her, and she had a powerful impact on her and community. the whole community. Yes, whole and community. And then we see that while he was out ministering the word, and of course, again, he had the assignment of Father God, and here. He already knew this was going to happen because he knew ahead. God showed him. He only did what he saw his father do. That's what the word says. He knew that uh, that the the fifteen thousand people. That's what they figured was there. Yep. You know, five thousand men, but all together fifteen. Yeah, the women but and he children. already knew that they would be hungry. He already knew that there was a little boy there that would have the uh, five loaves. And and the two fishes, right? Yeah, if you think about it, that's a big lunch for a little boy. Yeah, and so he had the, yeah, big, yeah, that was a big, but he already <laughs> knew that was what was going to be there, and that's what he chose, and he already knew that God was going to multiply it, yes, and they'd have 12, uh, 12 baskets left over of, of the bread. And so we see this. He already knew. So he, we're seeing the heart of the Father that he didn't want the people to go away hungry. And so the mercies of God, the love of God, the generosity of God, the Jesus going and healing the sick and the compassion of God would come upon him. And the blind would see, the lame would walk. He'd go, that he went down. Think about it, You know, where the, the mother lost her only son. She was a widow. And and uh, he went there and raised that son up at, during the funeral. Who sent yes. him there? That was Father God sent him there because he only did what he saw the Father do. And so we see that he's preaching the word and they bring this woman that's been caught in adultery. And so they say, well, the law says she's supposed to be stoned. And, and but he already knew that, and he already knew what to write in the in the sand. Whatever he wrote, they all left. And then he looked at her and said, "You know, where is your accusers?" And she said, "There isn't any." And he isn't says, "I, I, I don't accuse you either. either. Go oh. and sin no more." There was a heart of repentance. There's a really important yeah. part of all three of those stories yeah. we just went through, yeah. and that is is that you can't change people with just love, they must be exposed to the truth as to. well. Or you can't lead people with just the truth without the love. Yeah. And it was explained in both, all three of those situations, you can see the love and you can see the truth revealed and that changes lives. Yes. And yes, the the love of the Father, the mercy of God, mm. and God, Good. the heart of God is revealed yes. to Jesus, of course. Yes. And he shows us the image of the invisible God to okay. us, that he looks Revealing at our heart. again who God is. Yeah. And so we see that also when he went to a Pharisee's house uh, there, and guests were there. And this woman came along, and this is uh, Luke 7, uh, oh, well. 44. And we see there, again, that uh, she, you know, he sat down and this woman came and she was a sinful woman, but she began to kiss his feet. She washed, washed his feet with her tears. She anointed his feet with, oh, with yeah. perfume. And, Very expensive perfume. And yes, and, and they all judged him. Well, he, why is he letting her touch him? Doesn't, doesn't he know who woman. she is? Yeah. But Father knew a heart there. Uh, this woman's the heart wanted the Father God. She was searching for the truth. 
And Amen. Uh, That's a good word. And That's so, right. so Jesus said, you know, he, he pointed out, they didn't wash my feet. You know, uh, n- uh, nobody put oil on my feet. You know, nobody could dried my feet. He said, but this woman, and he said, your sins are forgiven. And then he talked about wow. those that have sinned much, love much. Love much. That's those a good that have scripture sinned too. little, love little. So that was so powerful that how God looks at a heart that maybe people's decisions in life, maybe their circumstances, maybe the prisons of their life have put them in a terrible place right. and that they have they have destroyed their lives and they they've made bad decisions and and they've been married many times and maybe that's you maybe you've made some really bad decisions maybe you got into drugs maybe you came from a very abusive home and and you were you were uh, uh, verbally abused and called they called you worthless and no good and terrible or stupid or dumb or maybe all of these things where you made bad decisions in your right. life but God sees your heart in the midst of your bad decisions crying out for him. And he's right there. He He meets you there. He looks at the heart. He doesn't condemn. He doesn't shame. He he has mercy for you and forgiveness. And he restores you. And, you know, and and he's no respected person. Even right now, his mercy and goodness will follow you all the days of your life. See, you find him. Amen. And then it continues. We see the power of intercession here. Jesus was an intercessor. I think he he got the whole plan to the day. Yeah. And then just went about it and miracles took place. We have learned in our lives that uh, we know our schedule. We know what we're to do. And we begin to pray the word over our day and and what's going on and what we're going to teach for the week or where we're going to fly to. We begin to cover it with the word of God and find out what God wants us to say. But we always see all of these in the plans that God has for us, the victory that God's already called us to work work in. Covered in the grace and goodness of our God. Yes. So now we see in the book of uh, Luke 19. In, just in verse 1, amazing, it says that, and Jesus went through Jer- Jericho. Jesus is the word. And, and Jericho was the foundational city that was the tithe of the promised land. And so a lot of people don't understand that the word always works through your giving. Yeah. Word, and not, not, your, not buying something, but it does work through the heart that has a Giving heart. heart, it can work through a giving heart. Okay. It cannot work through a holding heart. No, kind of interesting because a holding heart receive can receive the love of God, but if we keep the love of God in, in us, it 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 does no good. It has to flow through us, just like finance has to flow through us. God can only get to us what He can get through us. And so it, Jericho, He went through Jericho. It's really important <laughs> to grasp that, and then. Uh, he, he ends up talking to Zacchaeus, uh, and, and the scripture is pretty cool how how it t- teaches Zacchaeus a very rich man. So this whole chapter is about wealth. Yeah, and he was very hated because he was a chief Again, tax he went to collector. Uh, and and the thing about chief tax collectors was that he was collecting taxes, crooks. but he was a crook. He was taking more from them than what they were supposed to give. And that if they didn't give it to him, he'd put him in jail. Yeah. And so he got wealthy over over um, being so crooked and greedy in his life. And so he was hated. And he climbed up in the sycamore tree to see Jesus. But God sent him that way because it was the day for Zacchaeus that Zacchaeus had a heart. God saw something in the heart. Yeah, he saw a heart that wanted to be different, wanted out of this prison that he was in. The, 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 and when he received Christ or the word, yeah. suddenly he said, I'm going to give back everything. Give, oh my gosh, yeah. I'm going to pay it back and even more. I would, yeah, four times more. Jesus said this, takes. he's become a son of Abraham, or in other words, he came into the Abrahamic covenant and saved. And then Jesus said something even that goes further and says, hey, a son of man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. So also, not only did he come to save us, but he also came to take back everything that the enemy's ever stolen in your life and make it available for, to you again 
to receive it back. Yes. And I, I think about when you talk about this, I think about when I started to uh, to write the book and get the revelation of grace. What I saw in it that happens with people, and I had that, that because, you know, Paul was always, you know, he was upset with the Church of Galatians because he was there. He preached, they were Gentiles. He preached the grace, the gospel to them. They received it. And then when he left, the legalistic Jews came in. And uh, then what happened? They fell into law. Well, how did they fall out of grace into the law? Was because of the image they had inside of them. Though as Gentiles, they saw the law and the religion of, of the Jews. And now they've come into the kingdom of God. But the image inside of them was religion. Still well, that was my, law. Well, the, that was my image. I wasn't raised in church. The kingdom that, has grace. But I had, the law has none. Yes. But yes. Yes, you're but, right. But, but, but in my heart was I saw God as legalistic, judgmental, religious. Yes. And I wanted to be a part of that, but I didn't know how. But when I became a part of what I saw about the about God is what I did. I we got under the law. We went to church that everything was sin except eating. And, That's it. But I was happy there because that was my image. But but when you're under the law, you're under the curse. And so God had to set me free by the Holy Spirit, bringing me into grace when I we moved and out have to have a major move of God to bring that heart to grace. Yes. And, and so, it's available to everyone. Yeah. And so when I got the revelation of grace, when God led me by the Holy Spirit to bring me into understanding the new covenant, I came out here from Wisconsin and I heard the the grace message, I heard the faith message, I heard the confession message, and as I heard these different messages and embraced them because my and and my spirit said, yes, this is of God. And uh, then I was able to get free of the baggage in my subconscious of the religiousness. The bondage, yeah. Yes, and get free of that to come into now that revelation of grace. And I was an overachiever. Overachiever. So when up. you did it, you oh, were the best at it. Oh, my gosh. So you were better was, at law than... Yeah, I was law. law. So I yeah. was overachiever. And God asked me to do something. It was what I did. And I was in it here. Look at what I could do. And I'll pray. I'll fast. Whatever it takes. But we're going to we're gonna get what, what God says we should get. Well, that, that was my own good works. And once I got free of that, that yoke and that bondage was broken, that now I knew that, that okay, if I'm doing this task, God's already provided the people that should be there. there you go. God's already, it's already done in the kingdom of God. Now I'm praying and receiving what is already finished. I'm in agreement with it. And it's so different now because I'm in the rest of the word. And there's some people out there that are yeah. going through that right now. Yeah. You need to pray and sit them. So, Father God, now I just want to pray for the people. Lord, as we are talking today, maybe you're that person. The Bible says in the New Covenant, we enter, we come boldly before the throne of grace now to receive mercy. So mercy triumphs over judgment. And so this teaching is the Father God showing us his mercy and love for, for the people that he's created. And so I want to pray for you today. I feel like there's some here that you deal with judgment. You deal with legalism and religion. And, and, uh, and so God wants you to be free of that. You want to pray that? I... So Father, we just pray in the name of Jesus that people that have not understood fully grace, first of all, their heart receives grace for those around them, their family, their, themselves, and all that break the power of law that they have no longer intercourse with the law, but now full into the kingdom of God that is filled with grace and freedom. The law is bondage. Break that off from their lives today in the name of Jesus and let them experience the goodness of Father God in their life and they let go of all judgment, all unforgiveness and all offense that they do not guide their lives and hinder their lives and they hinder the process of receiving promises of God 
They let them all go and they choose to have grace for all of those around them, not loving their behavior, but loving people in Jesus' name. And I see people setting you free from that uh, judgment in your life. Bible says that grace of God that comes to us, that his mercies are new every, every day. Yeah. And so God's mercy comes to you. The word of God says to us now that, uh, that uh, you have his mercies on your life that is, uh, that is powerful in your life and sets you free from judgment. Mercy triumphs over, over judgment. judgment. So I see you free from that judgment. I also see you today free of being an overachiever. Let go, let go of that fear in your life now that you're going to fail, you're going to disappoint God. Let go of it and now take on what Christ has already done. Take his yoke upon you and learn of him. So take his work, receive what he's done and let the faith of the kingdom of God now come upon your life in the grace that God has for you. And uh, Jesus. God, do you want to? And if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity right now. God wishes that none should perish, but all should come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Would you reach out for Jesus? Change your life, not become religious, but enter into the goodness and the mercy of God. Just receive Jesus today and your life will make a whole new direction. He'll take it to success. He'll take you to the goodness of life if you'll allow him to. Just repeat after me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. And I ask you, dear Jesus, come into my life, come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. And then make sure you tell somebody you received Jesus today, most important decision. You just change your destiny from darkness to light. From earth to heaven, you're already going to spend eternity with Father and God. And if you need prayer today, there is a number phone number now. there to call. Or if you'd like to order product, really encourage you to get the book get and the workbook. Book. This is just get her done. This is just a taste of what is in each chapter. So Ooh, you want to so hear the whole good. book. Yes. So we love you. Have a great day. Be blessed of God. We love you. God bless, God bless you. you. See you next time. Are you ready to see more of the grace of God in your life? In the workbook, God's Grace Fuels My Passion, Dr. Maureen Anderson goes into an in-depth study of the life of grace and what that means. The law binds you, but grace brings you freedom. This book paints a picture of what grace truly is. Through personal testimonies, this is a life-changing revelation that God wants for you. Find this resource and more at thewordforwinners.com.